Hey guys, on one of my trips down to Akihabara, I found this thing. Pretty heavy kind of box. So I was having a look at it. It's a Matsunaga model SVC-1010 automatic voltage regulator. Caught my eye because it's, well, pretty new looking. Uh, only a, f a few years old. And it was, um, got a bit of weight. And I thought, well, automatic voltage regulator with some weight to it. Turns out it's got a Variac in there that's servo or motor controlled. So what happens is when you plug the mains in and if the mains is coming up and down you know the voltage is, is not constant this thing will automatically turn the Variac like this one here up and down with a motor to keep the output at a set voltage which you can adjust here. So it shows you, you know, what your voltage setting is and um, whatever you're testing or you're running it'll always have a constant you know, 100 volts or whatever you decide to set on here. So, I thought we'd open up, have a look and see how it works. And uh, hook up some multimeters, input and output, and uh, have a look and see what this thing does. So here we got the data plate on the back. Uh, it's a Matsunaga brand, automatic voltage regulator. Like I said, SVC-1010. Input voltage, 100 volts, plus or minus 15%, so you can go up and down by 15 volts. Output, between 100 and 115 volts, plus or minus 1%. Um, 1 kVA, so that output current would be, says here, between 10 and 8.7 amps, depending on what the actual output voltage is. 50, 60 hertz, and uh, it was built in 2002, so that's 14 years ago. So let's have a look at the inside of this thing and uh, see exactly how it works. And here we are inside the unit. Big auto transform at the back, geared motor down here at the front. Just a DC geared motor. That runs through on a shaft to the uh, brush at the back here. Basically what happens is the power comes in, comes up to the, uh, the power switch on the front and a fuse, just like with any electrical appliance. Then it comes back out to the auto transformer. Then from here, it comes out to the uh, front panel sockets. The uh, voltage uh, gauge here, this is uh, run directly off the output. So you, whatever is at the terminals is directly being read by this, uh, this gauge. This transformer here is also being run from the uh, output of the auto transformer. It's supplying voltage to the control board, which is just sitting here. And is also being used as the voltage feedback so that the motor knows which way to turn and how far to go. It looks like there's no monitoring on the motor itself. It just goes as far as it needs to go until the voltages match. There's two transistors here, so that might be the uh, the control for the motor. And there's a, a few transistors, smaller transistors. So I'd say that there's a, a voltage reference on this board. And that's controlled by the potentiometer at the front, the voltage adjust. That's... Uh, which wires is that? That's the brown wires, these brown wires here. So that will be adjusting a voltage reference on this board. Then through this transformer we'll be reading a, a voltage which is in proportion to the output voltage of the of the terminals, the, uh, the socket at the front. And then if that doesn't match, the circuit will then drive the motor whichever way it needs to go to then make those two voltages match. So it's like a voltage comparator. Um, we've got two micro switches here which would be limit switches so that the thing doesn't try and turn too far past the, the stop on the, um, the mechanical stop on the auto transformer because that will then cause the motor to burn out or strip the gears or something so that'll be just an override that will stop the motor turning. It looks like it's actually wired um, oh no, it's wired into the board uh, separately so it's not just hard wired to the motor so it must be monitoring it somehow Maybe it's wired in here so that it'll just cut power to the motor. And that's pretty much it. We've got two trim pots, which will be a calibration. Um, there's not much else to talk about. Just a motor-driven Variac with a, um, a voltage... It'll be a voltage comparator board. The capacitors here, what brand are they? They're a Nitsuko, Nitsuko, Nitsuko brand. Um, I'm guessing they're 85 degree rated. There's no real ratings for the temperature on them, but this shouldn't get too hot anyway. It's got good ventilation all the way around, so yeah. All right, well, let's uh, hook up some multimeters and turn it on and see this thing move. All right, well, setting all this up, I found a bit of a problem here. 
wasn't I wasn't getting consistent voltage. It was cutting in and out as this thing was rotating, and it turns out we well, got a bad solder joint. That might be why I got this thing so cheap. Um, I'm not going to try and solder that back on. I'm going to just drill a hole and put a um, a crimp lug on that and screw it down with a spring washer. That will mean that it's going to be a lot more mechanically secure and um, no more dry solder joints to come off. And that should fix our problem and we can get this thing moving again. And there we go. Just a nice crimp on there. Got a star wash on the back to give it a bit of grip into the metal. And uh, yeah, nicely crimped. Bit of Loctite in there too so it won't come loose with all the motion. So we'll put this back together and hopefully it'll, it'll work. Alright, so I've got the thing set up. Let's switch it on and see what happens. Alright, so we've got 98 volts coming in, 113 out. So, if I turn that up, you can see at the back here, this thing. Trying to keep a constant voltage. So we just hit the max, so that can't correct any more than about 123, yeah about 123 volts is the maximum it can correct for. And we can, you can see this is the voltage that's outputting, this is the voltage I'm putting in. So as we come down, further, further, 70, oh, that's it, that's the end. 70 volts is the lowest voltage. So between 70 and 120. Looks like we got a bit of lubrication required. We'll have to put some grease on the put some grease on the uh, shaft on the gears. But also, we can play with this dial here, the voltage adjust. So we can actually change what our output voltage is. That's maximum at 116. And minimum about 100. Just under 100. So yeah, that's pretty cool. It's no good for transients because this thing just can't move fast enough. So if you need transient protection, then you obviously you're going to look at something like a a uh, MOVs or surge protection or maybe even a, a large transformer to to try and even things out, capacitors and whatnot. But this is good for um, like the slow up and down of you know the the voltage over a day. You know with the the loading on the the grid, the supply grid can make the voltage drop and then as the load lifts off the grid you know, at night time or in the middle of the day the voltage comes up. So this will keep a constant output voltage for slow up and down which yeah, for laboratory equipment, test equipment can be very helpful so that you don't get altered uh, readings or um, if you're test testing something over a long period of time you need to have a, a constant voltage to make sure that your your test results are valid, so this thing can help with that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's pretty pretty neat. Once I give that a bit of a lubrication, it should be fine. All right, guys, that's what is inside a uh, automatic voltage regulator and how the thing works. We'll see you next time.